Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I want to talk about engineering. Now this is a subject that serves as the basis of everything I do in Stormworks and on my YouTube channel and I've been asked a lot of times what does it take to be an engineer? Now I'm very fortunate to have parents who are engineers, grandparents who are engineers, a lot of friends and family who are engineers and who were able to guide me and lend a hand during my time in university. That said, not everybody has people that they know that are engineers and some of you may be interested in applying to a university for engineering and you don't know people. For example, my fiance only knows teachers. She's a teacher, her parents are teachers, so she knows teachers, whereas I did not know any teachers until I met her. But likewise, she didn't know any engineers until she met me. So if you don't know people who are engineers, you may not be able to get that extra hand lended to you for um, information that will help you succeed during university. So this video is intended for those of you interested in pursuing a career in engineering, who are interested in going into engineering. Maybe now you are in high school, maybe you're in another career and you want a career change. But this video is for you. I'm going to give some advice specifically how to excel in university level engineering um, and pretty much hopefully help those people out. Now, I know a lot of the people watching my videos, Stormworks videos, specifically fans of Stormworks, um, enjoy this topic. So this is sort of a guide, if you will. The first thing that I would say hands down is required for engineering university le at university level is a strong, strong basis and foundation in mathematics. Now, maybe that's an obvious one. Um, obviously, you may have you may have heard that you need to know math quite well to get into engineering, but I'm going to explain it to you. There's really having a basis and um, experience in mathematics where you are really, really into the mathematical expressions, the relationships of mathematics, pretty much a lot of the stuff that we see in Stormworks. So for example, in Stormworks, if you have a speed node or sensor, if you have your fuel tank capacity and fuel tank at its current state, you could end up calculating your, um, get, get a range calculation. So you can end up with a calculation that'll say, okay, you'll have so-and-so amount of fuel to get so-and-so distance. So that's only one example, but this can be carried on to a lot of things in regards to mathematical expressions and relationships, such as even creating a, an engine, for example, and then making minor changes, maybe changing the piping rerouting, adding two exhausts, then making some major changes, maybe adding cylinders, maybe adding a supercharger, then calculating the actual, um, maybe the torque that will come out of these engines. Or if you have a generator, you could put uh, the, you can find the value coming out of the generator and you could actually compare these things to end up with a mathematical relationship between call the base engine and then call your supercharged engine and give you a percent increase. So you could do this quite easily in Excel and these are not intensive mathematical equations. It's not algebra. It's not calculus. It's just comparing values. It's quite easy, but this is day in and day out the type of things that you do as an engineer and the type of things that you'll do in university. I'm a civil engineer, structural engineer. So in structural engineering, we did a lot of building design, design the connection, design the beam. And while those are heavy expressions in math, you won't end up doing that when you graduate because you'll most likely be using a software for engineering and design, but you still have to know where that software f came up with that value. Sure, I can plug in beams all day into my software. It'll tell me whether they pass or fail. But end of the day, if you don't know where that comes from, the expression is garbage in, garbage out. And that's the university thing I learned. If you don't know what you're putting in, you can't really understand whether or not 
you're doing it right. The, the program could tell you, the software could tell you, yeah, you know, put a huge beam with, you know, two bolts and embed them, whatever, eight inches or something. And it could say, yeah, sure, safe. But maybe you didn't apply the forces correctly. Maybe you didn't apply the loads correctly and it's telling you it's safe because it doesn't have the dead load for the beam. For example, something as simple as that, whereas if you have a basis of that, you'll understand the note. So the, I said, I mentioned for two things of math. The first is the mathematical relationships equations, trying to find the best scenario, the most efficient, comparing results, comparing models, all that stuff. But then of course you have your foundation in advanced math at where it's the design of things. For, in my example, it would be, you know, the design of beams or connections, but also if you're in mechanical engineering, it could be you know, hydrostatic uh, pressure, it could be the m movement of things, gears, that type of stuff. So you have to know math very well. You have to excel at math at a, at a high level. So most likely in university, you're going to be taking calculus, you're going to be taking algebra, you're going to be taking the advanced maths. Those are all going to help you to graduate. So math is one of the strong points needed, really. But in addition to that, you'll also need to be super, super self-driven. I would say the number one difference from high school to university is in high school, they really do guide you and hold your hand to, to facilitate your graduation. Whereas in university, they don't do that at all. In fact, they prefer you not to graduate or to take two years of a course because they get more money. So what you'll see a lot of times is struggling in that first year. Now in Canada, here where I was, uh, the first year of university for engineering is a joint year where you actually do everything. You do electrical, you do mechanical, structural, ci uh, civil, you do um, computer engineering, programming, all that stuff. That's kind of where I get some of my basis in Lua, Lua programming is from the programming class in university. So you do a variety of things in Canada. I've heard you do the same in some countries in Europe. I'm not quite sure about the US, but that is a good way to determine what you will need to know and what you'll sign up for in the future. So you'd have the first year, a general year of engineering, and then you choose, yeah, I want to do mechanical engineering or yeah, I want to do software engineering. So you kind of choose those things, but you'll need to be self-driven. University does not hold your hand. Now, I just want to say, obviously, not everybody is made for call it traditional education there are people that just don't excel in traditional education they get poor grades but that's fine because a lot of times these people succeed in trades they succeed in other areas where uh, being book smart isn't relevant so that's totally okay if you find yourself not a school person not a high school person you just I wouldn't recommend engineering in that case but you could still be a lot of engineering related things there's a ton of engineering technicians or a ton of other careers that are in a similar field that just don't require that book smart call it high grade situation but again we're back to the topic where you need to be book smart to be an engineer you have to have good grades i'm sure your area has certain requirements for what grades you need to have to get into engineering but you'll need to be self-driven you'll need to be super focused on being able to push yourself and striving to graduate because they won't hold your hand. And a lot of people drop out after the first year. So they say it's kind of like a weeding process for those that weren't going to make it anyways, but it is difficult. So you have to hold your head up high. You have to push. Um, it's something interesting in, in at high school, I was like consistently like an 85% average student. Maybe in grade 12, I was like at 83 or so. But I, I would say my math and science grades were in the 90s. My English and social studies grades were maybe in the mid 80s, sometimes 70s for English. Not a huge English person, but math person. And that's what helps me. So um, being consistently in that 83, 85% range in high school, university was a shock because 
obviously it's weighted differently. So I was actually ending up with like 56% in some classes and maybe like 80% in some classes. So it was a massive gear change and a huge blow to my own kind of self-esteem because, you know, for example, I got like 40% on a midterm and in high school, that would mean you pretty much fail. You may as well drop out. But in university level, that was okay because the class average, for example, was 60%. So my 40 ended up being weight uh, scaled up and it ended up actually being like ending up like a 70%. So it's totally a different world, a different feel. And it's not the same as um, your grade, your uh, high school grade grading system. It's totally different and expect it to be different. So don't let things like even getting a failing grade in certain things dissuade you because as long as you're near the average you'll be okay so keep that in mind you have to be close to the average and the average weighting system is much different than it is in high school so what you end up with is a change actually I think I used 40 percent 60 percent it was it was different my my score was like 40 and the average was maybe like 50 or something it was a very very hard exam and ended up getting scaled up so that's something else then in addition to being just so super self-driven and all that good stuff you'll have to find ways to be quite um let's say creative with finding your solutions now and I'm not saying cheat. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you'll have to make friends who can help you out in certain areas. Maybe your friend is going to be really good at doing projects. Maybe you're good at doing uh, presentations, whatever. You can't do it all. That's what I found. There are people that can and kudos to them. I was not one of those. I had maybe five engineering friends and we would split up tasks and we would help each other. We would find uh, ways of succeeding. We'd have study groups. Uh, even before midterm exams, we'd sit and study for hours. And in, in certain cases, my friends actually ended up saving me because they would find, they're like, oh, let's do this uh, example or let's do this problem. And then that same problem's on the, on the final so or midterm. So like having a strong group and they don't have to be your social friends you don't have to go go out bar hopping with them or you don't have to go out and doing kind of I guess if you're in the US you won't be bar hopping until you're 21 but in Canada you will so you have a lot of distractions you turn 18 you're in university you can go do things you don't need to have social friends you have to have colleagues acquaintances that can help you succeed and that was a indispensable part of my education my friends helped me they pushed me I pushed them and we all made it through in the end friends also have different connections different ways of finding results and things a lot a big thing in, in my time was these roadmaps people would have previous years exams midterms things sometimes you buy them the school offers you to buy your ex old exams back and find out what you did wrong and not and then people hand them down to their brothers sisters friends whatever so we ended up with a Google Drive of roadmaps that helped immensely because the class examples you do are not close to what the midterm has, for example. Not always, but sometimes you get things like that. So I would say you definitely want to have colleagues and acquaintances that can guide you, help you split things. Also, just checking your assignments. I mean, I, I said don't cheat because if you cheat, you won't learn. That's the key reason. I mean, in addition to being expelled and suspended, if you're caught cheating, you physically won't learn. You'll you'll end up with a result that you won't know how you got and you probably won't graduate. So use your friends to check your your uh, results. You know, you do a math, you do a math problem or you do a, whatever an assignment and you bounce it off them to see, am I even doing it right? Am I, um, is it correct? Did I miss something? And then if you, you did miss something, a lot of times the teachers are super busy and can't really help you find out why you're not getting it. 
but your friends can. So I would recommend that highly. So these roadmaps, acquaintances, friends, bath, and connections. You, like I said, I know a lot of um, people in the engineering world. So then when I graduated, I was able to actually, through connections, find jobs. So I do recommend networking, knowing people. There, if you don't know people in the engineering world, then what I do recommend is an internship. Some of my friends did, um, thir after third year, they did an internship. They went to companies uh, that the school actually hooked them up with. So if you don't know anyone in the engineering field, you can find people like that and end up in a job based on the school. And then if you're good, if you prove yourself, most likely they'll invite you back when you graduate. So there is a, a certain various ways to enable yourself to graduate and then find a job. Now, what I didn't talk about, and obviously you have to be smart with computers. You got to be good with good with computers, good with technology. You got to be very keen, observant, all that good stuff. But at a very basic level, I think you have to have super strong mathematical skills. And then to graduate university, you have to have that self drive that push that desire to graduate motivation you know you cannot just slack you can't just go to the pub you have to put in the work so you have to put in hard work you have to stay focused and help having friends having connections acquaintances contacts will help you with that having a um sort of a good basis in computing and whatnot will also help you and otherwise that is everything for this video. Drop a comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer any kind of technical university related questions for those of you interested because we need engineers. Engineers are awesome. They get a lot of things done in the modern world. So if you're interested in being an engineer, uh, I want to help you out. So drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and see you next time, everyone.